Now, where we left things off, we had this beautiful random melody being generated by simply looking things up in the n lookup table and using the random operator to generate us a number between 0 and 24 to do that lookup. We're sending that out as a 1 volt per octave pitch to the plunk and playing this beautiful marimba sound. Now this is interesting, but maybe we've given up a little too much control. So this might be the right time to start looking at the tracker. So let me just remove this and let's go look at the tracker. So to get to the tracker, press tap and you'll recognize it by seeing these four columns of numbers. And if you haven't done anything in here at all, it'll be just zeros to begin with. And you use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move between the individual tracks and to move up and down on a track. So let's fill some values in here that we can use to play a little melody. So in this case, put 12, press enter to save it. Go to the next by pressing down key. And then let's step uh, a few semitones up. 14, step a whole octave up, 24. Let's go one tone down from that, 22. And so here's a little four note melody. So let's go back into our script and look at how we can read out this. Essentially what we want is for the script, every time it's playing a note, we want it to read one of these values and jump to the next. And it turns out that that is exactly the kind of thing that the tracker can do for us. So we want to get the number and we want to send it out to CV3, just like before. And we want to use the lookup table using N, just like before. But now to get the value, we want to look into the tracker. And there are many operations to work with the values in the trackers. And there are many settings for each of the trackers. Like, do they wrap around? And what is the actual length? Uh, removing elements, adding elements, deleting elements in the middle, deleting elements at the end, etc. Uh, but for now, we've manually entered the values. So what we want now is an operator that just goes through each of them and cycles around. And the operator for that is pn.next. You'll notice that most of the tracker operands are either named p or pn. p is the kind of early operands where you're specifying what track and then what value. Oh, you're sorry, you're setting your track and then it'll assume that you're always at the same track. PN, all those operands assume that you're going to tell it what track you would like to operate on. So in this case, uh, we want to get the next value um, of pattern zero and then have it move one ahead. And that's all we need to do. So if we jump back to the tracker view, you can see the little marker that says which value it's reading right now. And you can see that it's actually repeating this little melody we made. So if we now go in and add something to it, how about 16 here? Now we've extended our melody and the length of the track is now one element longer. We can use backspace to delete this. And you'll notice that that just deleted the, the value itself. Um, I forget what the shortcut is to actually Yeah, I'll have to look that up later. There is a shortcut to actually remove the value. But what this shows you is that 
there's a difference between the numbers in there and the length of it. So if we added another zero down here. Zero is not a missing value. Zero is just the value zero. What we can do is um, we can go out. Let me just log up here. It's been a while. But we can go out and set the length of this. And I can just go out into live mode as this is playing and say uh, pn.l, which stands for pattern length. And I want to set, or maybe we can start out by reading what is the current length of pattern zero. It's seven elements. Well, I know that I had four originally, and what I want to do is set the length back to four. And now we're back to that. So now we're back to the original melody. And the interesting thing is, if we go add a couple here, So now we've added elements of the melody and you can see it's flowing through them and playing it. If I go out here and once again set the length to four, and let's go back and look at our tracker. It is now only cycling through the first four, but the values that I added here are still there. So that means that what the length of the numbers that you're reading through is completely different from the actual length of the track and the numbers that are in it. And that's going to be an important concept to remember later, both when we use the patterns to, or the tracks to store data in, uh, but also as a performance tool, you can set yourself up for uh, being able to quickly move between different melody segments or extending a limiting melody segment by having something like this that's playing a melody and yet you might have other values that you can add later. You can also change what the starting point um, of our pattern is. Let's see if I can remember. Um, so let's try to jump back out to live mode and we'll say pn.start0. So what's the current starting point? It's zero. Let's try to set it to one. Back in and look at the pattern. Oh, that didn't actually work. Oh, I did it wrong. I gotta tell it first. I want track zero and I want start to be one. There we go. So this does bring another interesting little side note here, which is if you've not done any programming before, you might be wondering, why is step the first step? Why is that not step one? That's just an artifact of how programming languages work, which is that the very first element in anything is element zero. So in this case, while we have four elements, it is element number zero, one, two, and three. And right now we've set the start of the pattern to be step number one, which is not the first, but the second step. So now that you know that you can set both where the end and the start is of the little segment from the track that you're looping, you have the tools to set up a little live sequencer for a jam you might want to do where you can pre-populate the track with different little melody segments. And then you can just jump into live mode like this and you can change your start and end point on the fly and in that way, having the tracker function as a sequencer, where as you are working your way through your jam, you're changing to different melody elements. And for me personally, I like a lot the effect you get by having a sequence going that you expand upon and contract upon while you're actually playing. To me, that adds something where the listener is still remembering parts of the melody, but the melody is kind of growing and it gives like an interesting creative thing to listen to. Uh, one other last note on this is, as you can see, I can scroll down and your individual tracks or individual patterns in the tracker here can be 
very long. They can be, in fact, 64 steps long. So if you're using it as a sequencer, each track gives you 64 steps, which is quite nice. Now, one of the elements we might want to do here is we could have a second sequence and we could use it for something else. So in this case, let's set, let's create a sequence here that is two, zero, five, eight. And now on purpose, I'll create this sequence longer than the other sequence so that they go in and out of sync. Nine. And let's quickly jump up to the live mode here. And let's just set our slew time down to something a little more manageable. And this is on our fourth CV output. Set slew down to zero. And now let's go into our script. So right now in our script, we're triggering gate output one, and we're setting CV output three to the next value in pattern zero. Well, what would happen now if we set CV4 to, and for that one, since we're modulating, we're not looking at the Western scale, we want to use V for voltage here. PN dot next one. So what we should expect to happen is that it'll cycle through those values I put in, it'll set CV4 to those, and that will drive the decay length of the tone here. So let's try it out. Oh, I have a typo, which is I'm missing a space here. Once more. And now we just, that little change, we have something that's way more dynamic. And you'll notice that even though it's the same little four step melody, the fact that the two aren't in sync means that you're not hearing the exact same thing over and over again. Instead, you're hearing slight variations on the melody being matched with the different decay lengths that we're modulating. And again, we could use on that track, we could also have a longer uh, list of values prepared. And then in a live setting, we could change our start and end to slowly change this. I hope this was useful. I hope this gives you enough tools at this point to start doing some really interesting stuff with your own teletype and your own rack. Uh, I would love to, uh, to hear and listen to what you're all making. So please throw me some link in the comments. And as always, if there's something you want me to prioritize doing sooner rather than later in these videos, just let me know in the comments. Um, hope to uh, have you watching again soon. Thanks for watching.